Hello there everyone and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with a Great War mod. We have quite a few things to do today. One of the main things is we're landing troops in Scotland and we're going within quotation marks. Set a Scottish free. So the um, Imperial Navy has set up right off the coast of Great Britain. The Royal Navy hasn't come out to meet us since their disaster up here. So I am now free to do the final step in this attack. So we're going to go ahead and move inland. And I'm going to drop off my force right about here. And with that, we're going to see about taking as much of our naval force. Ah, oh, yes, this one was cut down quite a bit, wasn't it? I don't want to leave this one alone. I don't know why I moved him out there. This one needs to go in for refitting. If the Royal Navy comes out, you know what? He could actually be a lure. This Borodino battle class, um, battle cruiser, could actually be a lure to bring the Royal Navy out of the Chatham docks. So I'm going to take my main fleet, go into Antwerp and refit it. And then we're hoping the Royal Navy comes out to fight this one right here. I just noticed there's a uh, British aircraft that spawned right there. Let's see if I can shoot it down. 95% chance of shooting it down. Uh, no, <laughs> he actually shot me down. Damn it. So this was only a little reconnaissance pl plane against my bloody fighter. But he was able to... I don't have any other fighters, do I? No, it's all reconnaissance planes. We need to get another fighter over there so I can shoot him down in revenge. We got another bomber, we got another army. Now, a lot of the British forces, as we can see, have kind of moved over here. It kind of leaves an open... It kind of leaves an opening. You know what? It's kind of risky bringing him on. Bringing this... Ar we bring this entire army of, I don't know how many men, all of it onto this little destroyer. And then we're going to go for Cardiff. So not only am I going to release the Scottish, we're going to release the Welsh as well. So that will actually bring out, hopefully bring out this fleet as well. And I can just cut them all down. Because this one, uh, I'm not entirely sure if this one alone can take on this. But I could detach some troops, some ships from this, sink both of these fleets. That would be nice. So we've landed one up here, going for Edinburgh. Um, they will be able to reinforce with this army, which is mostly actually Indian infantry. And some cannons. But I, Oh, it's all Indians! Scotland is entirely defended by Indian troops for some reason. Um, but we will be able to attack and take that. I'm pretty sure that nothing stands in our way. He should also be able to attack and take Wales. And that will be done. And now we've kind of set the stage for what's going on here. If we f go further down here. So there was a bit back and forth. Uh, what I could gather from the comments was that there was no one actually saying that I shouldn't give territory to fascist Italy to increase their influence. So I think, now I was a little bit worried because I would be making less money from um, the areas I would be giving up. But at the same time, of course, they are not allies but protectorates. And protectorates pay in to me. So currently fascist Italy is paying 867 from that one province. And that's obviously going to increase. I still want to retain the port here in Genova. So what I'm planning to do is we're going to give up um, we're going to give up Milan and we're going to give up Rome. We're going to stop the improvements because I mean they're going to be stopped anyways. 
And we're going to decommission the troops. But I think we'll wait until we have actually given up the territory and these have been moved to get rid of them. Let's do that right now. Fascist Italy, I am going to give you two regions. I'm going to give you Rome and I'm going to give you the Milan region. I'm not going to give the Austrians um, Venice just yet because obviously they're not... Uh, Austria is not my protectorate, so I won't be gaining any money. So that will be a complete loss of income. So I'm not going to go there just yet, but we're going to go ahead and give them these territories so now Italy controls not only Napoli they control Rome and now they control Milan and I'm gonna get rid of these troops and I think my economic situation is basically unchanged we're not we're not gonna see an increase from fascist Italy just yet but that is going to come um, so now Fascist Italy holds a lot more, and hopefully we'll be able to maybe give in... Well, first they need to set up some troops here and there, but then I think they will take a bigger part in the war. Then also, I still think... You know what? You know what? There's no point in waiting. There's not a lot. I've already kind of scouted what the um, Italians have here. And it's not a lot. It's not a lot. A lot of it is sniper units. I should be able to smash that pretty easily. So that's what's going on here. Rotley not really got any naval forces pulled out to be able to go against any of my enemies. I'm kind of hoping their economies collapse and somehow their navies go... Oh, sh crap. I just noticed there's two French forces loaded up with troops. Where are all these friendships coming from? Can't they just bugger off? Um, we're definitely going to have to attack. You know what? No, that might be cooler, actually, if there's more French troops coming in. And make a big battle out of it. Um, so that's what's going on. Kind of Italy. The um, You know what? I've got fighter planes down here. They need to be going to the coast instead. We're going to have our revenge... One thing that I kind of feel that might need to be balanced is just because right now, or at least I felt, or really the player is mo moving so quickly, like, we never really got to see a lot of, like, late stage troops of a lot of these armies, or they come when they're kind of already defeated, so maybe they could, that could be sped up, or may, I don't know. Maybe it could be a later campaign, but at the same time, you don't want to go have it go too fast, maybe. If you enjoy the early period of the war. But that might be uh, increased. So, let's go over to here. So, the Ottomans are holding on, for now. And it seems to be fine all along the area. They've got one army... Which I've noticed is sprinting through here and going all the way up there. I don't know where, why they think they'll be able to take that. So we kick them out. I've got a lot of money, so I'm just going to go ahead and. That's probably going to be too little, too late, but I can sink these two and we might be able to then relocate and get some of that oil to increase. Taking a look at the area here. Oh yeah, I completely, for some reason I thought these guys were going to attack, but obviously not. Um, hopefully the Austrians continue through. That's what I'm hoping Hindenburg is going to be able to do, eventually, get around to attack up here. But at the same time, the Russians are now facing revolution. So we've got revolutions going on everywhere, so Russia is going to crash within a turn or two. Um... I wonder, the thing is, I wonder if it completely messes it up. What, hap what happens if I take a territory? For my territories are fine. But say, if I take this and I create a Ukrainian puppet, what happens because this is going to spawn and be Ukraine? 
So I'm not like sh I'm not sure what what that's going to lead to because I kind of want to take this and turn it into Ukrainian puppet. But right now I don't know like is it going to is that going to mess things up if I already created a Ukrainian puppet? Could be any could be something to think about. Um I think we'll hold off maybe. I think we might hold off. We might move back, actually, and hold on this side of the river and wait to see what happens. We'll let the revolution have its course. Um, and that goes for everyone, I think. We're not going to be able to go across a lot of these. We're going to probably be forced back on a lot of areas. The communists are going to take these areas, the Soviets. So we're just going to pull back across the border, see how the revolution plays out. And then, once the revolution is played out, we'll go and pick up the spoils. Because we still need we still need a lot of these territories for our objectives. So we need Moscow, we need Novgorod, and we need... You know what, maybe I should have pushed through. The thing is, I'm wondering if the Ukrainian states... Ukraine gets formed that I get pushed out anyways but otherwise I would have pushed I guess pushed through and that's kind of what going on there then there isn't much so the battle that we're looking at today could be Scotland could be Sicily could be French coming across could be a lot of things but We've set it up now for battles, so let's just go ahead and turn and see where we come to blow with the enemy. It's going to be the British, it's going to be the Italians, is it going to be... I mean, it would be cool to see what happens with the revolution, wouldn't it? But enough talking. Let's go ahead and end turn and see what history brings us. So part of the Royal Navy was lured out as expected... The destroyer is going to retreat. Oh, we've got the navy up here came out because these guys decided to route over here. Um, there's nothing for it, just out to resolve it and it's gonna sink. Let's see. Ah, the second one comes out as well. So now we actually we actually managed to get three of these squadrons of the oh, squadrons. Battle groups of the, uh, whatever you want to call it, of the Royal Navy. We're going to have this one retreat as well. Ambush! I am able to ambush an Indian force here. However, I don't think that's going to be a fun battle. So, I'm actually going to wait until I can do a proper attack on the town. Right now, we could fight, but we'd still have to attack the town afterwards. And I think it would be... Better to do everything in one battle rather than this ambush. And especially since the ambush is going to get reinforced. So let's look for more substantial battles than these pitiful ones. We have quite a few interesting changes going on all around. Let's go ahead and see. We've got that's our bombers being spotted. Crown Prince of Bavaria. Here's one thing that I saw. I don't know where all these troops came from. A completely, like, second army turned up. So suddenly there's tons of Italian troops. I'm pretty sure if I move into range, we will fight them. We've got a ship in the English Channel. That's good. Uh, unfortunately, that little destroyer was destroyed. Uh, commercial sector. Also, we had some interesting going on here in the Black Sea. So, the Ottoman Navy actually came out and sunk the ships that were stationed right here. So, that's pretty cool. However, that led to the Russian Navy going into port and uh, stopping trade with the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so, kind of interesting. And it looks like the Austrians are heading north as... At the same time as Ottoman troops are also heading north. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, it's just the first step of it. Hmm. It's just first step of the kind of revolution or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's going to happen much later. 
It was just that one where it drops down really rapidly for one turn. Oh, is this... Oh, no. The, ah, this is the one where they... Is this the one where... The parliament takes over. And it becomes... And it's no long... Uh, it's still an absolute monarchy. It's something like that. Or maybe if the Russian generals get their stars back... That could be an indication. Thing is, I don't know if I want to... I pulled everything back because I thought it was going to... Completely messed up time frame, right? Because it's not going to happen right now. But I kind of want to. I kind of want to see, and it's, it's going to be interesting for me to go in and, you know, rather than go in now and take on the Russian army, it could be interesting to go in and attack the uh, Soviets, the Bolsheviks, the Communists as they rise up, and will rise up through the splinter. So we're not. We're not. We're even though I could definitely have moved because revolution didn't happen now. Should have studied. Better at school, so I'd had the dates right. Um, but yeah, I think we'll just sit and wait, and we'll see when as the revolution kicks in, and then we'll join in. Um, so nothing there, and wait, where did these guys go? Have they landed their troops? No. Where did the French ships go? <gasps> They're going over here. Ha! Huh. Where? What? Hmm. How did I not notice this? Where are they going? What are they attacking? Are they gonna go through here? No. No. Are you gonna attack the capital? What are they doing? So, it's they've got th the uh, fascists got three ships there. Definitely not enough to take on the... What are these guys doing? We're going to detach you just in case. Going to move down to Constantinople. Just in case. Interesting, the French move this way. Hmm. That actually makes it a little bit... You know, there's less navy forces here. Now it's just this force. Still, my force is not strong enough to take them on. But if I can slip some ships through somewhere... God. It's, I wish there was a port like here. So I could have recruited more ships. Um, it definitely makes it easier to move now that two navies are going this way, but... I wonder where these full stacks are going. They're just going to aid the Russians? What's going on? Anyways, back to Britain. Here is where we're going to fight. So, a lot of British navies have been pushed out. Let's start by moving Wales, shall we? Because that's going to be the easiest one, because there's nothing there to fight. And... Can I demand surrender? We're just going to auto-resolve it. I lost 116 men, and we took the place. You cannot, in fact, <laughs> you cannot, in fact, release Wales, but we took it, and that's just as well. Okay, so that definitely puts a hamper on the British. Uh, I would like to probably try to recruit cavalry, just so I can run around and kick all the naval forces out. Or b burn as many ports as possible. I don't need my aircraft in there anymore. They need to go out and kind of discover where the British forces are. Maybe we'll have a bomber go over there. We'll have a bomber go in. This navy is going to be sunk. I'm going to move out my fleet here to sink that. But I think I'll do the remainder of naval battles of camera. I think the main one was really this one. I don't think the the other battles here are going to be 
that interesting because I will be able to defeat the Royal Navy in detail what it looks like right now. They will be able to strike this one out which is really the main one and then one by one they'll start to fall. We'll open up the trade with Ireland and so on. Um, also this, I mean this fight isn't that much either is it? Um, I'm gonna have to play it still. But I guess we'll see if the counter-attack... I wonder if... I, sh I think Sco Scotland is probably a country you can release. I think, maybe. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it is. Um, but yeah, we'll have to play it because it's too even. Even Steven. I guess then, since we don't have a proper battle as of yet, I think we'll go for the one in Sicily because that's going to be a big one. There's two full stacks of Italians. And it'll also be final because now, similar to what happened to the French, the Italians will now be stuck on a small little island. Not as small as the French, but still small. Here's the setup of the battle. We've got the artillery over here, most of the infantry and the machine guns over here are going to advance along the road. Most of the infantry units are put, pushed on this side. We've got the marines in the center and two units on this side. Most of my assault troopers have been placed on the left side as they're going to be facing the home guard. So all the way out here we've got the stormtroopers with submachine guns. The MP-18 is going to go in, start flanking up the side. To hold these guys in place I've got the assault stormtroopers with rifles. They're going to sit up here firing down upon them. Over here, hidden in the forest, we've got another new type of unit, which is the Rifle Grenadiers. So they will be lobbing grenades into these guys, which don't even have cover in front of them, so that's going to be great. Uh, place bombs here if the enemy decides to move along the road. And Bob's your uncle, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to get the machine gun somewhere along there. And I'm going to get the Rifles moving forward, infantry and so on. Okay, rifle grenadiers starting to bombard the home guard right from the start. Taking out lots of troops. Enemy trading fire here with the stormtroopers on the hill. Submachine gunners ready to move forward. These guys cannot yet shoot at the rifle grenadiers. Damn, that's... I had set it on way too long. They're, they can't shoot the rifle grenadiers as of yet because they're down there on the uh, back side of the slopes and they're not going to... Didn't I place two bombs here? Why is he able to, this Indian infantry, just able to pass by it? I'm going to set those troops up there. Guess we'll set you there. And then the... Uh, Marines over there, machine guns slowly making their way through the woods, can set up right there. Go. Infantry pushing up to support the rifle grenadiers. Oh, my machine gunners forgot to move them in time. So they got close enough to melee fight with the home guard, which was not intended. The home guard might be able to shoot a bit here, but once the submachine gunners open up, there would hopefully not be a lot they could do. Decide to reform in the middle of everything, actually facing the wrong way, but still being able to uh, fire back at the enemy. I can move forward, throw some grenades on them. We'll pull the rifle grenades back, actually. And then let the two regiments of infantry deal the most damage to the home guard. I was hoping for more kills there, but I think it's because... I'm not sure. Oh, there comes that. And there come the hand grenades. The home guard is really able to hold on there. The Welsh... No, not the Welsh. We're uh, now thinking of the other one. Um, the Scottish Home Guard. 
is uh, really holding on there. Being able to uh, do quite a bit of damage on my submachine gunners. I'm uh, going to tell them to throw hand grenades on them. Let's get red. Okay, they were throwing hand grenades all over the place. But now there's only five guys left. So if you could please just open fire, that would be great. Or, no, you're not interested. You're not interested in shooting them. I mean, they're right there. Like, you've got 38 people with some machine guns. You can't hit that one guy. Right. Both these groups were kind of cut up pretty badly. Going to set them in cover here. Most of the enemy will send back over there. We're going to have the infantry now sweep towards these with the rifle grenades following behind. Rifle grenades also suffered quite heavy casualties. Let's move closer and go ahead and end the rest of these. And I think we'll just set the machine guns right now. We'll just set them in place where they are. And then, why isn't the artillery firing? I want the artillery then to last there for the last bit. It's almost one for each unit. Right, and now the machine gun starting to open fire here. Getting rid of that. Rifle grenadiers firing with the rifle regiments. I think this is definitely a really good strategy. With the rifle grenadiers in the back. So that they are not shot to pieces. With infantry regiments in front. Let's move further forward. Take even better positions. So, those guys are gone. Let's move forward and attack the last Indian line here. The sub, I mean, the machine guns can't do much at this point because kind of out of range. All the enemy. A little bit worried that this one's going to go up and murder these, but I don't think they will. Have these ones, these guys even moved? They started moving just as I said that. Not as heavy casualty on these guys as I Now, a heavy shot from the uh, artillery, but they're not accurate enough. And they're not shooting often enough. Go back over here. They're closing in, but they've been completely cut up. Rifle grenades and the infantry shooting down the remainder. So now all we have left is the cornered Indian troops, which fight bravely, but it's heavily outnumbered and heavily outgunned as we've trained our heavy artillery on them. How did the bombs... Did I forget to set the bombs? I thought they passed, like, right by them. S supposed to be able to kind of see them. I guess I might have forgot to place it, or that they just passed... just, like, passed it without actually hitting it. Seems like most of... The Indian troops that are left are over here. Gonna go ahead and barrage. We'll have the Marines force the flank together with the um, Assault Pioneers. And then we also can have this regiment slightly starting to tilt toward in favor of the enemy. Or towards the enemy, I should say. Let's see, 90 men, 107, and about 40. When these start, these stop and start opening fire, yeah, it's a, they're about, yeah, there we go, they're broke. And the battle is won. 
and Scotland has been taken. So when initially in this invasion it's gone really well, we've taken Wales and we've taken Scotland, leaving Great Britain with a single territory left. However, that single territory holds like eight full stacks or something like that. But in time, I should be able to deal with that as well as we're uh, also about to sink the Royal Navy. Oh, all the shots went off at the same time. But there we have it. Scotland has fallen. And here's the result of the battle. We deployed 1960 troops, lost 431. I probably wished we lost fewer troops. However, we destroyed a British army of almost 3,000 men. Looks good. Um, let's go ahead and see who's the highest killer. Heavy howitzer, 511. 244 for the second heavy howitzer. Then assault pioneers. A little bit disappointed in the submachine gunners, I must say little bit disappointed as I was hoping that they would be but also I mismanaged it I mismanaged it they the um, the assault guys with the rifles on the hill should have been like they should have been sitting behind cover and they should have been able to I was hoping that they'd take more dam be able to take more damage or like you know soak up more bullets and then the submachine gun would have moved around the flank. And then I think if you would be able to concentrate the stream of bullets coming out of the submachine gunners up the flank of the home guard, I think we would have seen a lot higher casualties. So, yeah, mismanagement of the troop. It still survived, though, which is good. But uh, we only have 1,500 men. Guarding Scotland right now. I think we'll, what we'll do is... How did the Marines do? How did the Marines do? Imperial Marines did, I guess, pretty well. Uh, we definitely need to recruit troops here. Oh, I can liberate it! Yes! <laughs> yes, yes. Obviously, yes. William... Again? Uh... <laughs> We went, we went to Finland, and they, then they gave us every single black person in, in Finland. Now we've got every single black person in Scotland as well. How does that happen? How does it happen in both places as well? Why is everyone so willing to give up all their... Ah, oh, they kicked out of the port as well. That's good. New nation, Scotland. Ancillary gain, cross, or oh, iron cross. Nice. Good. Scotland! Da -da 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 -da. Uh, I wonder if Britain will declare war on them immediately. We'll have to give them kind of a lot of stuff. I mean, they immediately declared war on uh, Ireland did an armed rebellion. They weren't supported by us, but damn. Uh, Sc Scotland's Scotland's free, so we got the Scottish. Maybe I should give Wales to the Scottish, ju just so. Wait, what's the rep yeah the replenishment shit? Oh, and I can't recruit any troops. That's the bad part. Uh, so I guess we'll focus on well, our assaults are gonna come out of Wales, I guess, which is okay. Look at the territory. There's two bridges. Easily defendable. The only way around it is by sea. Which they do have a port here. But they'll have to pass close to the bridge. Or they'll have to go through here. Up here. Come down through the forest. So that's pretty dangerous. But let's not ma make this episode too long. Let's see if we can strike here. I think they will intercept me. Just because they have so many more troops than me. Okay, they didn't. Um, 
Maybe this will be kind of a smaller in-between episode. I don't know how long I've gone, really. It feels like I've done a lot on the campaign map. Uh, I guess we this could be an in-between kind of episode. And... Huh. The question also is if I want to do... All the naval battles kind of end up the very much the same. So, for expediency, I might want to push through that. Uh, otherwise, I would have an episode completely just dedicated to sinking all the ships. But at this point, I think that will go pretty well. There won't be any big hurdles there, and I'll be able to con completely control the area. Um, right. Right, 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 right. Um... Let's go ahead and give Scotland some stuff. First of all, we're gonna give them all the technology. Oh, Kirk, Kirk Drummond is... He looks... He looks very Scottish. Is it like a... Like a proper Scottish... We should give... Military tradition... We should give our own military tr traditions, right? Unless there is a... Uh, unless there is a Scottish one. Should have given, um, and now we'll just give them everything. Everything. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty darn cool. Um, let's see, let's see. Troops, aircrafts. They're going to need some cash as well to quickly bolster their own defenses. That's going to be really interesting if the if the British cross in and we have a battle where we get like a three, not a three way battle, but like we're in, coming in to support Scottish troops and we have Scottish troops basically dressed the same as the British, fighting the British. The British pro probably also have their own Scottish troops still, like, uh, yeah, like that. They've still got uh, Highland troops loyal to like the Queen. Rather than the, this new state. That's going to be interesting. Um, right, right, right. Is there anything else? We got a lot of funky things going on. With the invasion of Britain. Taking Wales. Setting Scotland free. And at the same time it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Russian Revolution. Got the dates mixed up there. I just was so excited seeing the revolution happened that I just like completely forgot about the fact that um, is it kicks off later in the year uh, but yeah damn um okay so for the thing also mm, I wonder here I wonder I wonder there's kind of a lot of things that I kind of want to just what I could do is, for the next one, I could set it up so that I can jump quickly. Like, quickly jump past a number of battles. I could do like I did in another one, where I did the battles and then I just show you kind of what would have been the end screen sort of cinematic of the battle, where it is sort of like the naval battles or something. I could show something quickly happening rather than all of it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think we'll end it here. So it might be a little bit of a short episode, and I mean, there's not a lot to pull up from the end to the end screen. But there was so much, there was so many movements and so many things going on here. A lot of interesting things. Like if we if we recap, we've got French forces moving somewhere here. Are they going to attack Constantinople? Are they going to support? Like an attack, I might go for it, they, they, that they're going to go for an attack here. Who knows where they're headed, but that's my prediction. Uh, secondly, of course, we have all, we we starting to see revolutionary tendencies in Russia. We want that to kick off, so that's going to be interesting. Kind of, now when I think about it, a little bit more. I'm a little bit worried that, like, I'm cutting it way too close to the timeline of when I need to capture this if I wait for the revolutionaries to pop up. 
But I still think that that's going to be worth it um, in the end, just to like, you can't have a complete campaign without being able to see like the Reds and the Ukrainians and all others revolt against the Russians. Um, so that's what's going on there, and then obviously the the mess that key that went on here with us being able to take Wales, uh, occupy Cardiff, and then also release Scotland as its own nation. We even got a little gift from the Scots. They forced out the navy up here. I mean, stuff is definitely not going well for the British Empire right now with the home island being torn asunder. The thing is, even if they're able to push us out, imagine the civil strife of all these regions uh, gaining independence, like the Irish and so on. The Irish didn't get... I mean, the, we helped the Irish once they actually established control over Dublin, but... Um, I guess in a roleplay way, we you could kind of work it into the we help them in some kind of way, just because... Like, I gave them so old technology afterwards and stuff like that. I'm taking credit for them uh, kicking out the British when I really did have nothing to do with that. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess on that note, we'll end it. The uh, It's really starting to... I don't know what to say. Like, I'm, I think it's so cool what's going on right now. Anyways, what I, uh, let you, yeah, time to end it. So, I'll say, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.